Welcome to Nico Props. I'm Chris Fry, also known as Nicodemus. So, um, yeah, so the, uh, I had the Muse delivered um, and it was broken and the screen was busted. So uh, I spoke to the customer support at Full Spectrum Laser and they agreed to send me a, uh, a replacement screen. Originally they were going to take the unit back but then decided they were going to replace the, the screen, which is actually just the, the whole side panel. Now this box turned up today. I had to pay customs for this as well, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to see about trying to get those back. I'm not sure about the customs regulations yet. But one of the things I noted when I made my um, complaint, as it will, to, to Full Spectrum Laser was about uh, the Full Spectrum uh, Laser, sorry, the Muse box not having Fragile on it. And I said about putting Fragile on this one. So as you can see, there is several Fragile stickers on there. There's a Fragile sticker on that side, that side, that side, that side, and I think there might even be some on the bottom. Well, there's not because it's expected to sell. It says on here, uh, Fragile, handle with care. This shipment left our dock in perfect condition upon arrival. Please inspect for damage and incorrect quality before signing. Any damage to the contents should be noted on the bill of landing. Um, it also says on these these red ones, uh, please do not double stack. And there isn't any, well, there's a little bit of denting on the corners, which, which is okay. Um, it feels fairly light. I think it's very well packed. I haven't even, I haven't opened it. It's completely sealed. So let's, um, let's open this up and have a look at the panel, the replacement panel, and hopefully this will be all right. I'm not going to cut all the way along, I'm just going to nick that and then maybe that's not going to work. I'm going to be very careful. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm deliberately videoing this, um, not only so that you guys can have it, but also if there's any damage, I want proof that there is damage. There seems to be a considerable amount of foam here. This is just that um, closed cell phone. I mean, this is probably all right actually, I could probably use that for something. This seems to be the package with the panel in it and yeah the rest is just it's just full of foam. More foam and uh, several blocks of foam to kind of jack it up to suspend the thing in the middle. So that's that's very well packed. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Well done, full spectrum. You have heeded my uh, my askings. So let's um, put this out of the way. I'm gonna drop that down on the floor in front of the camera. Let's have a look at the actual panel. I'm gonna do this very carefully. Obviously, with the issues, they didn't want to. Uh, take any chances so they've really well packed this so it's uh, it's in foam so what I'm going to do now before I continue uh, I am going to stop the footage move the camera and, uh, and get a closer look as I unwrap this okay so uh, we'll move the camera we can see is very well protected. It appears to have been pallet wrapped as well. Ah, these are. I'm going to be careful with these. So what we've got here on the back, these are replacement uh, sort of ribbon cable type things for um, for in case I break it. They did say they were going to pack some extras for me. So I'm going to put those carefully to one side. I don't want to. Uh, I'm just going to fold that over because I don't want to damage it. I'll put that over here. I just want to check to make sure there's no other hidden little extras. Okay. So I just need to do this very carefully. So 
certainly don't want to damage the part. And then it'd be my fault. Carefully unwrap this. I have to tear it. Just have to do it carefully. This is just the standard stuff they use to, unlock, to wrap pallets in. Keep that out of the way. They have. They really wrap this thing up really well. It's a bit like shrink wrap, you know, like uh, or cling film that you uh, that you would use in the kitchen. Only it's industrial grade, so it's just a bit tougher. really have gone to town on this. I don't blame them though, because they don't want to, they don't have to keep shelling out for parts. Oh, please don't tell me that's broken. I think it's just, oh, had a heart attack then. I thought it was broken, but it's, uh, I think it's just crinkles in the actual, so that is the panel there. So we have this ribbon cable here. Apparently there was two ribbon cables on the video. Oh I see. I see. This ribbon cable. So I've got this one here. Let's see. Let me bring this closer to the camera. I've got this one here and then underneath this little panel here is where this one goes. They were going to say they said they were going to give me a separate one. Unless there's two in here, there might well be two in this packet. I'm not sure. But that's uh, so. We've got this cable, this one, and another ribbon cable for the actual screen. So this must be the touch panel. That must be the touch panel, and that must be the screen. It's my Alexa going off in the background. Um. So yeah, this. Looks like an intact screen. So uh, let me clear up this, change the camera angle again, bring the muse out here, and uh, and we'll go through removing uh, removing the old panel and putting this one in its place. So I've brought the muse out here, and uh, you can see obviously the clearly the damaged panel here. Let me bring the replacement panel next to it. You can see that's just going to be a direct replacement. Now, after watching the videos of um, of full spectrum replacing this, it's going to be a simple case of when I open up the casing at the side, I've got to remove some screws. This cable has to be unplugged. This ribbon cable and the additional ribbon cable that's attached to this will need removing as well. Now, I have this other extra ribbon cable that they've sent me so I will uh, keep hold of that which is now covered in bits of uh, fiberglass kind of static um, and uh, yeah let's get uh, let's get the camera angle changed so that you can see the side shot of me opening it up I, I would provide their videos but I don't have their permission so I think it would be best for me to just record my own um, then I'm not going to get into any trouble. Um, and theirs was filmed on a hand cam, which I can understand why, because of the, the, the fiddly nature of actually removing it. I want to make it clear though that this is just me videoing, me replacing it. This is not a tutorial for you to replace it yourself. I'm just doing this for informative purposes. So let's uh, let's change the camera angle so you can get a better shot of the side of this as I take it take it apart and open it up. All right.
Okay, so I've got the side panel removed. Um, however, they did say use a two millimeter um, hex key, which I did, which removed these top ones here, no problem at all. These bottom ones, both sides, were done in so tightly that I couldn't undo them and the heads just bared. I had to end up drilling the heads off so that I could get the panel off. Um, so now these bottom screws can't be used, so I'm only going to be able to screw it on from the top. Irritating. So uh, just poor manufacturing really. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to follow this video, remove the spare panel and put it out of the way. So what the video says, some of the dust off of this. The video says to do is to remove this cable here, which is this um, this one right here. We're going to just pull that out carefully, like that. Okay, so now apparently to remove this panel, there are six clips. One there, one there, one there. One there, one there, and one there. So three at the front, three at the back. Um, but before we do that, I need to open up the lid. And there's a cable at the back here that uh, is for the light. So we're going to disconnect that. Move this rail forward a bit. Now, what I need to do apparently is reach in for this clip here. And then there are two clips at the front, which apparently I just push against, and that just lifts up like that. I probably ended up blocking that when I was doing that, but uh, essentially I just pushed against these front clips and pulled the one at the side there. So I now need to do the ones at the back like that, and that is now free. So I now need to disconnect the ribbon cables um, and I'll move the camera again for that. Okay, so we're at the side of the machine now. There's a ribbon cable in here, but if I just get in there, that's it. That is now disconnected. And the only thing I've got left is this last ribbon cable just here which I have to do from the other side, I believe. And it's just with a fingernail. And I should now carefully be able to lift this out. So that is the damaged panel removed. Now I've got to reverse this process to put it back in again. But first things first, let's take the new panel and uh, come over this old panel. I need, move this bit of capped on from here. I need the little cable from, uh, from there. And that goes into this ever so carefully. So, Okay, so this is the new panel. So we've got to get this skinny wire to hook in and back into here. So I can slide it in. And I can see it, but it's, it's getting it. Not only slid in, that's seated. Very tricky this. Okay, so that's it in. Now the only problem I've got is I can't physically get my fingers in there to flip it up. I'm gonna need something to do this with. One second.
comes in. Yeah, that is in. Okay. So, that just pops back in place. This cable goes back on here. Plug the uh, the other cable in for the lights. And that should be it. So I'm gonna close this up now. That was very, very fiddly. And then uh, we'll power this on and see what happens. Okay, so we are in the Nico Props office where I've put the Muse back on its desk. Uh, I haven't powered it up, I have just plugged it all in. I've got the extractor fan next to it, um, it's not actually hooked up to anything so I can't run anything yet, I just want to do a power on test. So I'm going to switch it on at the mains. And that's the hum of the transformer. And there's a switch at the back of the unit for actually turning it on. Well, we've got power to the panel so that's a good start. And there's a display. You can see text on the actual display. Let's give it a minute to start up. So that was the repair of the screen side of, uh, of the Muse. <clears throat> now that, uh, that clunky noise that we heard when it started up, that was a homing issue. It was actually a problem with one of the sensors and I'm going to do a video on how to fix that if you're going to have that problem. Um, I'm going to put that video um, over this side here and, uh, and other videos like my unboxing and things like that. If you want to subscribe, it's going to be in the round symbol up here. Okay? Thank you for watching.